bringing colleagues onto the same page, having the kind of conversations that are essential for successful businesses. And that's what we want to do. We want to help clients be more successful by getting more colleagues onto the same page. And we, we do that by using our big picture tool that we own that we're going to use today and we're going to see demonstrated. Now, what I'd just like to focus on from a return on investment, from an onboarding perspective, we're going to see a demonstration of that today, but there are three elements of that ROI. One is new starters or existing colleagues are a lot quicker in terms of being productive, coming back into the workplace, whether they're new or existing. So instead of waiting two or three weeks for them to be productive, if we activate them and get them involved in a discussion, they're more productive earlier and we can put some numbers around that. So that's one of the functions of the ROI calculator. The second is that within that time when they do become active, they will then generate more opportunities and insights into the business. So they'll bring their experience to bear and they'll be more productive, quicker, and getting more ideas and opportunities out. And we'll see that in a really practical way when we add opportunities onto the board. And then thirdly, onboarding as an activity lasts for a period, but it's natural that once that colleague is activated, they will then become a colleague who's interested or involved in change or in strategy or just carrying out their day-to-day -day work. And they'll go maybe into a learning community and they'll be expected to perform as best that they can to be the best colleague they can be. And because of that, the benefits of using big picture from the onboarding, that first activity is then carried through. As soon as I think of onboarding, um, I'm thinking that it, it refers to new recruits. But do you know what? I also think there's really shaky, dodgy thinking. If we restrict our world, to focusing on new recruits when we use the word onboarding. And, and why do I say that? Well, uh, as soon as someone new joins an organization, then actually the whole of the dynamics changes. And um, so it's really about the interaction of the existing people with the new recruits that is all part for me of the onboarding process. And if you want kind of, you know, a bit of semi-tech on that, it makes me think of, you know, loving, loving more loathing, Bruce Tuckman's thinking uh, 56 years ago around forming, storming, the notion of joiners, leavers. And so I want to challenge our thinking already. Onboarding is not solely about the individuals who are joining. It is indeed much wider than that. It's what is right for a combination of both the business and the employees, because Employees, I think, are much now more wise and savvy about the asks they will make of us as employers in terms of what they want regarding working conditions, why and how. So we can't afford just to assume the old ways will be the new norms that will continue to engage our existing staff members or indeed attract new people to come and work with us. For this next section, what I'd like to do is to get us to imagine that we all work in a paint company, if you can stand to go with me on that. I've decided that this paint company, it's the paint manufacturer, so it does do the mixing. Yeah. So how am I going to get back to the face-to-face, -face, which has been the main driver for the way I've done business? I've always done business face-to-face. -face. It's been what excites me about the job. I don't get the same, I worry that I don't get the same effect when I'm on Zoom. Yeah. Well, I've, I've already, I've already mapped operations. That's, oh, I'm, I've been in the workplace the whole time. If you've been in ops, you can't, can't make paint without being there. It's been great because everybody else has been away and just managed to get on with your job. Right. So, so are you, are you fine about everybody else coming back in? If that's what we're going to do as a business? No. <laughs> Keep them all away. And what's interesting about that that I'm spotting, and this is where the voices in the room and perspectives become important. If I've read into this correctly, Ed is happy in the workplace and has been, and there's no real issues there, although people come back might affect him. I, as a director, have been 
quite happy. And one of my fears is that I don't want to come back into the workplace because I like the peace and the quiet and I can get everything done at my desk. And then, Steve, you've articulated a keenness to get back in from the home into the office to be more effective at face-to-face -face meetings. So there is a difference there in the way we're perceiving a movement from one place into the other. And I think that that is a connection and a conversation that might be oversimplified by some organisations, perhaps, in the way they just say, we're all going to do this because it feels like a very individual thing as to where people are happy and what their fear and excitement is. I actually feel I've been able to be more creative during lockdown because I've been able to work to outcomes. What's the end goal that we need to achieve here rather than being micromanaged? So I've put by my marketing manager at the moment, an opportunity symbol but actually, I could actually I could put I could put me as a marketing team member in there as well. And, and for me, I'm going, hang on, that's not an opportunity. That's a triangle. That's a risk for me because I'm going to have to go back to being micromanaged. And I'm not really sure I want to put up with that. And I think these are the kinds of conversations that we need would need to get out. And, and I, I would hope that almost in a, a in a visual way with a board like this, you could you could you could do you could do so in a almost more constructive way than that and this is where the divergent thinking or the the emerging thoughts then converge on the opportunities list so i don't know if anyone else has got another one they'd want to promote to the top just for fun you can anyone can pick up any of those and just put them to the top we always encourage a conversation around why they've done that there is a sense of stating your case so we could play around with that from an action point of view and that's how we bring conversations back together probably on a board like this over my shoulder and um, we keep everyone's working out but we then bring it together on one board so that's that's what it's saying to me what insights has this given you about the principles of onboarding stroke reboarding? And I, when I actually positioned it, I saw lots of nods around the room. So thank you very much for that. Um, I've then got, how would a conversation like this enable you as an organization to identify issues and opportunities you need uh, to facilitate the living with COVID world we are entering? How could a conversation like this um, help enable you to identify issues and opportunities between departments, partners, suppliers, given the shift in business? So that's kind of a bit of a realignment question. How could a conversation like this enable you to facilitate team working and different expectations people will have of returning to the workplace? Because I'm thinking you could run this at a team level because some people might be saying, I'm so looking forward to getting back in because I've lost my mojo. And others are going, I've been shielding and I'm terrified about work returning to the workplace. So it would enable that team conversation. How, the fifth one, how could a conversation like this enable you to build engagement? I think we've demonstrated that just now by the level of interactivity we've had. And lastly, not, not that they're in any priority order. How could a conversation like this enable you as an organization to fulfill a duty of care to the individuals who will each have experienced this last year very differently? And I, I you, you probably hear it, hear it in my body language and hear it in my tone of voice. I think that is a really important question to be the asking of ourselves as employers. So I work in education at the moment. We've got the administration who are really keen to continue yeah. working flexibly and from home yeah. and all of the academics want to get back yeah. into the buildings for resources and for face to face with students. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be really helpful in getting that sort of realignment of departments to think about that, because that has, that, that has occurred, you know, without people really thinking about that. That's the way the, dis the discussion is going, because we haven't 
joined it together. You know, yeah. the isn't academics. It, isn't, are going, it in, isn't it interesting, Steve, between education and a paint manufacturer, which was fictional, yeah. we've arrived at yeah. the same thing that me as a director next to admin want to stay quite happy away from the coal face because I've got clear headspace. But Ed, as the paint operational guy, played a beautiful role of saying he's been in all the time and wants to be front of house, fronting up. And it's um, yeah. it's uh, almost without realising it, operational staff want to be front of house delivering and admin and management are probably going yeah. to get more done and more productive. Yeah. As Reg said, that pattern has come out through this session. Yeah, exactly. That's why I mentioned it, because it's like... You, you can see that that's a very similar theme and it can happen unknowingly in, in terms of everybody's talking about getting back in the office instead of realising that you've got that sort of, yeah. I, I think it's a pretty fundamental split. Yeah. 